Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Floor monitors. You can hear the floor monitors, your voice is floor monitors. Hey. Yes, I can, yeah. All
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Test one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
all-gender restrooms are located in the library, RCC, and Cole Science buildings. There is a live feed of the ceremony available in the main lecture hall for guests who wish to watch the proceedings indoors. Please be seated. Please be seated. There is a live feed of the ceremony available in the main lecture hall for guests who wish to watch the proceedings indoors.
Please be seated. We'll be starting in two minutes. Please be seated. Please be seated. We'll be starting soon, very soon. Please be seated. Please be seated. We'll be starting very soon.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Jamila Jackson. I had the incredible honor of being the staff speaker at yesterday's reception. I'm so proud of you, all of you graduates and my friends, my community. And it is with great joy that I welcome you all to the 2018 Hampshire College Commencement Ceremony. The assembly will now be in order. Please welcome Gay Hill, chair of the board. You can't know how happy this makes me to be here today. <laughs> welcome everyone. I'm Gay Hill. I'm the chair of the board of trustees of this great institution. Hampshire College. We have a, most of the full board sitting on the stage with me, joining and saying congratulations. All are friends of the college. Some of them are also alums themselves. And one is receiving his diploma today. Others are parents of alums, like me, or parents of current students, and one has a son who's graduating today. <laughs> Our faculty, staff, and student trustees are here too. We are a diverse group by any definition of the term, but we all volunteer our time and talents to Hampshire. We share a commitment to the future of this college and to the wonderful people who are Hampshire. We're so happy to be here. Congratulations. So the faculty and the board have approved your degrees, your diplomas have been signed, and soon you'll be walking across the stage. But let's take a little bit of time to focus on the meaning behind today as you celebrate earning your Bachelor of Arts degrees at Hampshire College. Let's cherish this achievement that this cer commencement ceremony signifies. First off, thank you to all the families who are here today for being there for your students throughout their educational journeys. At times, I'm sure the Hampshire approach has been both confusing and challenging but I hope you feel it has been worth your emotional and your financial support. <laughs> I hope Hampshire's been a place your students found an academic home and succeeded in growing in more ways than you could have imagined when you first sent them off. They've learned to ask questions, make connections, and to think comprehensively, critically, and creatively. That will serve them well as they continue their productive lives, adapting themselves as change carries them along in their careers. Graduates, as you progress from Div 1 to Div 2 to Div 3, you were pushed to form your own conclusions based on facts you gathered, to seek answers to questions you originated, to analyze conventional wisdom to determine if it applied to you. Each member of this graduating class will have a different definition of personal success and you will continue to learn and to teach and to value independent thought and collaborative action. Woo! I've been spending some time thinking about the word commencement. A basic definition refers to what's happening here this weekend, the ceremonies or the day of conferring degrees or diplomas. But think of that again. Yes, it's the ceremony this day, but commencing also means beginning. Today marks the end of one stage of your lives and the beginning of another. And as so many Hampshire alums have found, one of the real benefits of being a Hampshire, of having a Hampshire education is that this is not the only commencement you will celebrate in your lives. The skills you have acquired in mapping your own college education to this successful conclusion have given you the skills required to continually reinvent yourselves in life. You will have many more beginnings. 
exploring new areas of interest, finding meaning with your communities, your work, your families, creating, promoting, and supporting positive change. It's a challenging time for institutions of higher education in the United States and for small liberal arts colleges in particular for a myriad of reasons. Hampshire College isn't immune to those pressures. But I know Hampshire's future is secured by all of you as alums, family, and friends. And we owe a huge thank you to the dedicated people who are our amazing faculty, staff, and administrators. For sure. They will continue to uphold the mission of the college by guiding, advising, and supporting students as they have you. This commencement marks a milestone in the history of Hampshire College. Our sixth president, Jonathan Lash, is marking his own graduation of sorts, retiring after serving as head of Hampshire for seven years. And in doing so, he's observing his own commencement beginning his next adventure on his life's path. Aren't you lucky to be sharing this day with him? <laughs> and now, Hampshire College's president, Jonathan Lash. Thank you. So here we are. It didn't start raining till you got in the tent. And it wouldn't have mattered if it had been pouring rain. It can't dampen us. This is a glorious day. I felt, I felt a special relationship with the class that started when I do, when I did, and I feel a special relationship with all of you. Um, mostly what I'm gonna say today is how much I love and admire you, but I got a few other things I need to do first. <laughs> okay, trustees, speakers, faculty, deans, staff, family, friends, a very, very warm and happy welcome to Hampshire's 48th commencement. Yeah, whoa. So are we middle-aged? I, I, what does a middle-aged Hampshire look like? We began this two-day celebration yesterday afternoon. Thank you, Jamila and Chris and Ava. Um, it was a, a nice, uh, a loving, a warm uh, event. We conclude this morning with an extended chance to celebrate the culmination of the college's year, your career here, and my career here. Those of you who are graduating got it figured out in four or five years. It took me a little bit longer, um, but I did get to ring the bell last night. Yeah, I don't know where you all were. I rang it, my wife Ellie rang it, several trustees who graduated before there was a bell rang it, a couple of retiring, fa in fact we had a totally promiscuous festival of <laughs> ringing the bell, but everybody stayed fully clothed. Okay, as I said, I do want to talk about how much I love and admire you in just a moment. First, I want to recognize some people. I want to repeat something that, that Gay said. I want to recognize the parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts and siblings and friends, all of you who brought us this wonderful class and trusted Hampshire with the education of these students. I hope that you're as proud of these graduates as we are. Thank you for the sacrifices, the support, and the love that has made this moment possible. And to the Hampshire staff who offer support, who provide services, who create programs, who hold the place together all with amazing care and patience and an indefatigable sense of humor. 
that I find remarkable and moving. Thank you. Thank you to the Hampshire faculty, the core of the enterprise, the great educational, oh, I got lots to say about them, hold up. <laughs> the great educational philosopher Paulo Freire wrote that education occurs when a teacher risks an act of love. That is the wonderful gift to the Hampshire faculty. Hampshire faculty are here because they love to teach Hampshire students. They give of themselves to do it, creating a learning process built around you and your questions and your ideas and your concerns. I attended a great and venerable Ivy League university. And never in the four years that I was there did I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a professor about anything of substance let alone a shared exploration of ideas. The notion that student questions should shape the educational process would have seemed bizarre, preposterous. What do they know? But that's what we do. That's what makes this place so exciting. That's what happens at Hampshire. And it is indeed a great gift from the faculty, a true act of love. Could all the faculty and staff stand up? I, I just the devotion of all of you to our students, the love and support the commitment to the idea of Hampshire inspires us. Now every year at commencement since I've been here, I've talked about the bell. You've each rung it. In fact, it's really one of Hampshire's only traditions. <laughs> and by the way, incoming President Nelson, we really need to invent some new traditions. Maybe that could be a contest among the alumni <laughs> to think of things that in the future will be assumed, because you know, the bell was, it, it wasn't here always. That's only a 30 year tradition. Anyway, every time I hear the bell, even last night standing there ringing it myself, it makes me chuckle. For me, it's, it's a sweet sound. It punctuates the tempo of each Hampshire spring. It affirms the near miraculous courage creativity, and independence with which you, like nearly five decades of Div 3s before you, have channeled your passion, harnessed your curiosity, and set off independently to explore something you cared deeply about, and in the process, discover how and where and why to learn, which is the most precious discovery of all. You have found your way, sometimes stumbling, sometimes inspired, through the obstacle course of Hampshire's inquiry-based, learner-driven, discipline-integrating in education. It's hard, it's supposed to be hard, and you did it, amazing. <laughs> you, you know that after this, if like two-thirds of Hampshire's alumni you decide to go and get some more education in graduate school, it's gonna seem easy. Because <laughs> you've done it all before. You have recruited and persuaded committees. You have designed curricula. You have imagined questions and wrestled with the maddening way that the search for answers only seems to deepen the questions. I saw a Wordsworth line that made me think of the remarkable process you pursue. He wrote, what we need is not the will to believe, but the wish to find out. Non sadescire, huh? That's you. Hopefully you've reflected. Surely you have clambered over conventional approaches and invented ways to turn your ideas into action, and that skill, it turns out, will stay with you and empower you. Not everyone has it. In fact, most people don't have it 
what you do. In this era of disruption, you have the capacity for improvisation and reinvention. I've spent a lot of time in the last seven years with Hampshire alumni. Their stories seem always to be filled with unexpected leaps and abrupt turns and curious combinations adapting to change and opportunity. Where do you think they learned that? And you know it's not some weird, ex well, maybe it is eccentric, but it's also in demand. 70% of you are going to end up in jobs that haven't been invented yet. In fact, being Hampshire graduates, many of you won't actually go out and get jobs. You will create them. Yeah. Right? I, your, your own organization, because you're concerned about something, your own gallery or social venture or business or a creative mashup of all of those that nobody's ever done before but you thought up. You're gonna do it because you're fearless inventors. You're harnessers of disruption. Your time is now. One idea that I do hope you will take with you after this experience is something that Professor Chris Tinson and Javiera Benevente, the director of the Ethics and the Common Good Center. Something they wrote about as democratic free speech. It's critical as a community that we uphold the right of every person to free speech and expression, including the right of nonviolent protest. They're essential rights, particularly in a community of learning. But what Javiera and Chris ask us to recognize is that free speech, while absolutely necessary, is not sufficient to support our goals of inquiry and justice. Free speech alone does not protect those whose voices have been ignored. Indeed, speech is often easier than dialogue, which requires listening and empathy, and can lead to understanding, growth, and change. We gain much nurturing the skills of active listening and reflection that sustain dialogue and enable learning. It's something that I have seen Hampshire students do with incredible sensitivity and wisdom, and I hope you take with you from here. Okay, one more thing. You and I, right, we share the same challenge. What next? You may have plans, I'm not so sure. I've mentioned to some of you that one plan is to become an opinionated curmudgeon, <laughs> which should come naturally, but I don't think it'll be enough. So I'm gonna get re-engaged in climate issues, climate politics. I think I'll take the advice also of former Vermont Poet Laureate David Budbill. I don't know if any of you were here when he came to campus to speak of, on a panel on the arts and social change. He is an irascible man with a sharp tongue and an aversion to any form of sanctimony. And he wrote a poem called Three Goals that I plan to take to heart. This is a, a bit deep, rather spiritual, but worth thinking about. The first goal is to see the thing itself in and for itself to see it simply and clearly for what it is. No symbolism, please. The second goal is to see each individual thing as unified, as one with all other 10,000 things. In this regard, a little wine helps a lot. <laughs> the third goal is to grasp the first and second goals, to see the universal and the particular simultaneously Regarding this one, call me when you get it. <laughs> My friends, you can learn anything. You can invent what you need. You can build what you can imagine. You are the change, and therefore you thrive in a changing world. You've rung our bell. Now ring the bells of society. Again, knowing you, I don't have to tell you that. You give me hope. Thank you.
So now I'm privileged to hand the podium to the wonderful, award-winning, student-inspiring professor of animation, Chris Perry. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you for the seven amazing years of service. We all just gave him a round of applause, but um, you'll be missed. You asked me to give you a toast. So first, to a group that's been acknowledged already today, the families, thank you for sharing these loved ones with us. May you welcome them back with love and learn from them as we did. We return them to you older and wiser and much better equipped than they were four years ago to question every single decision you've ever made. <laughs> what, did you, what did you think we would do? And to the graduates, my dear, beautiful, hardworking, amazing, stylish graduates, <laughs> on behalf of the faculty, congratulations. You did it, despite our diabolical best efforts to get you trapped in the ham tricks. <laughs> we have been so thrilled that, that we've had you in our lives. And as much as we don't want to lose you, we know that we must. Let you go, because you're ready for the world whether or not the world is ready for you. The famed Swedish toastmaster Niels Heinrich said there are three keys to a successful toast. The first is stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, and shut up to be appreciated. <laughs> so here's to you amazing people, congratulations, thank you, we love you. And it is now my pleasure to introduce the true star of the show, your student moderator, author, marine biologist, queer activist, and all-around amazing person, Nick Lifton. I'm a millennial, so uh, my speech is on my phone. So just, <laughs> just bear, just bear with me. Uh, so uh, happy graduation. Oh, I mean graduation. Sorry. <laughs> In this wonderful, I'm just gonna adjust this. All right. <laughs> In this wonderful year of 2018. Uh, You know, those bagpipes uh, really woke me up. I'm not a morning person, so that was, like, amazing. Uh, I remember my first year when I heard them, and I was like, what school do I go to? <laughs> and here we are, four years later. <laughs> um, I would like to uh, thank every single person who spoke before me. Um, I would like to thank Professor Chris Perry the animation wizard. I would like, woo! I would like to thank Jamila Umi Jackson, queen, period, goddess, period, in that order. <laughs> I would like to thank Jay Lashical, the Jay Lash. <laughs> it's the end of an era, you know? There's been this cryptid on campus <laughs> that I've been, one of my favorite invertebrates I've been studying, Jonathan Lash. <laughs> the interesting sock wearing, uh, pizza talk giving uh, cryptid. <laughs> Who always sees me when I'm looking my worst. <laughs> whether it's Hampshire Halloween just asking for tater tots, 
or <laughs> or I it's early in the morning and I I'm in my boxers and pajamas because I'm not at class yet but I need to be <laughs> there there he is <laughs> just sneaks up I'll I'll miss it <laughs> thank you to <laughs> thank you to Gay Hill so much um, but I would especially like to thank my fellow graduates I'm proud of you all for many things, but I'm also very proud of us for getting up this early, because I know like most of us, unless you're like a science kid and you five college classed it, like <laughs> you haven't gotten up this early since like first year tutorial 9 a.m. class. So <laughs> good job. I believe in you. We're gonna get through this together. <laughs> Um, and we all were on time. I mean, like, we run on Hampshire time, but we, like, showed up and walked at 10.45 on the dot. Like, is that growth? <laughs> Have we grown? <laughs> Into our own beautiful Hampshire trees, anyways. I would like to talk about someone who is very, very dear to me. Um, Samya, <sighs> Samya Joshi. <sighs> I have known Samya since first year. Um, I, like many of you, have come, came to Hampshire because I wanted a school that would talk about the injustices in the world and take action. And I feel like I learned that I can survive here through my chosen family and close-knit community friends. And I have immediately felt that since one of the first weeks with Samya. I was adopted onto the Hall E1 because I lived on D1. And <laughs> represent! Dankin! I, I mean Dakin, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I, when I first came here, I was privileged enough to be able to travel all the way from Kentucky um, to visit this school. I saw people with multicolored hair climbing trees, and I was like, this is home. <laughs> and I've made a home here, and we have these last four years, or however many amount of years you've been here. <laughs> it's a journey. <laughs> In my late night wanderings of the halls during the blizzards our first year, I would often be awake when Sonia would be getting back from late shifts at the library, working at the front desk, helping delirious students check out anything from Settlers to Catan to Judith Butler. Or she would be up working all night on some paper or some new thing that she had to put all of her energy in, which she has endless amounts of energy, probably more than the solar fields, <laughs> both in the woods and by the Yiddish Book Center or she would be up talking to her mother on another continent. And it was always the sweetest thing. I'd hear things like, I love you, and I miss you, mom. And we'd have late night delirious conversations about family and what it meant to be far away from home and how we were building a new home and friendship here together. <sighs> I'm so proud of you, Samya. You are a force in this world who works harder than anyone I've ever met. <sighs> You're a total goof, a total smarty pants, and a boss cook. <laughs> I then continued to be Psalms groupie by hanging around the Middle Eastern Immersion Mod in, <laughs> woo, represent, Greenwich. <laughs> it's green because of the mold, I'm just. <laughs> That's, that's not my original joke, but it, it's still true. Um, <laughs> so I'd be there all the time, making a home and continuing family. Her energy does not end. She has single-handedly run wholly the last four years. So anyone who's shoved powdery samosas into their mouths in celebration of something they're not really sure about, but they like say that they know what they're talking about, or they call it holly, which I definitely did my first year. So I'm, I, 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> I need to check myself. Uh, but I'm so, so very proud of this individual. And without further ado, Samya. Nick. That was so very kind of you. I'm kind of emotional now hearing that. I'm gonna take a minute. <laughs> wow, it's an honor to be here, to be voted by your graduating class. I can only express in very few words how this makes me feel. Um, I have a confession to make though. The only reason I wanted to be commencement speaker this year so everyone could get a good look of my sari. <laughs> Right? I thought so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, jokes aside, I do have a few questions um, for the audience. So feel free to respond by raising your hand so I can see it. Just with a show of hands. How many of you know what's happening in Yemen? Okay. How many of you know what's happening to the Rohingya? Okay. How many of you heard about the sexual assault, pardon me, the many sexual assault victims in India? Okay. How many of you know about what's happening in Venezuela? How many of you follow on a regular basis what's going on in the United States of America? Ah. So, I can be wrong, but from what I can tell, all the other issues I talked about, everyone was kind of 50-50, but with the US, a lot of you follow what goes on. Let me share an instance with you, which is small, but significant to me. I hosted a vigil about two weeks ago. I'm the organizer for Junoon, South Asian Students Association, which is a club on campus centered on events happening in the subcontinent, whether cultural or political. This vigil that we hosted was to support the family of a sexual assault victim that had recently passed away in Jammu and Kashmir, which is one of the 29 states in India. I won't go into the details of it, but it was brutal, and this event that my co-signer and I hosted was to honor her and raise some money for her family. Anyone want to take a fair guess of how many students showed up to this event? There were never more than five people, even those in increments. I was a bit shook by how much it impacted me that people didn't show up for this event. I questioned it over and over again. Why was I so bothered by it? Probably after I racked my brain for a couple hours, I realized that my anger was rooted in my constant and utter disappointment in a community that is usually so avidly involved in issues around social justice and advocacy. I'll give you another reason for my disappointment. I grew up in India and in the United Arab Emirates. One is in South Asia and the other is part of the Middle East. Throughout my upbringing, I was taught to focus on the world outside of these two countries to attain a more global understanding. Imagine my concern when I move to a country that is so centered on its own issues that people don't look outside of it enough. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to mislead you on this issue. Hampshire's community does care about other events happening outside of the US, but only when it's related to them or when it relates directly or indirectly to this country or when there's some form of festival. The more I've thought about this and reflected on my time here as an international student of color, I've realized the uniqueness of my position. My very first semester at Hampshire, I felt like a misfit, like I couldn't fully be a part of this community. Not because I didn't have any friends or because I wasn't social. I believe it was because I knew close to nothing about the racial politics, issues around gender, and most importantly, the Western way of engaging and thinking about these issues. Soon after, I understood that if I wanted to be a part of the Hampshire community, I needed to decolonize my mind and unlearn the many problematic opinions I may have had. During this process, I encountered the stark realization that being a person of color at Hampshire was, being, was different than being brown in India, and that being an international student complicated my stance on the many issues that were addressed on campus. 
Another striking realization that I had was that before coming to Hampshire, I had never been labeled with one core identity or been told that I was part of a minority or that I was marginalized without knowing a single thing about my history. I had never experienced being labeled and grouped into one identity and had assumptions made about me due to the color of my skin and the flair of Indianness and my accent. It doesn't stop there though. I've had people take pity on me because I'm from a third world country. I've been fetishized because I'm exotic. I've been tokenized as the hybrid person of color, neither here nor there. I've been asked, do people in India speak in English? And I've reluctant, reluctantly held back on yelling at them, we were colonized for 200 years by the British. And instead just responded with a, it depends, for the most part, yes. If I were to count the number of times someone mispronounced or misspelled my name, the speech could, would go on for a couple hours at least. And this isn't a struggle faced singularly by me. You can ask other international students and they were more or less echo the same sentiment. It has been a journey of being absolutely amazed and stunned at the lack of awareness that the people around me have had about where I come from. It's been fascinating that so many people throw their sympathy at me for issues they had no idea about while I controlled my laughter because I never wanted your sympathy, I wanted your empathy. I don't think I've ever walked on eggshells the way I have here, constantly trying to prove my worth, my awareness, my wokeness, my politics, and I can go on. I realize that now, that I couldn't have expected the same from the very people that had pushed me to complicate my opinions and stances over the last four years. This is what has frustrated me. I'm a firm believer of the idea that change begins at home. So I understand the emphasis on solving the issues and crisis of this very country before branching out. Although, when home is the reason for issues outside of it, then home needs to do better. We as people that have devoted our time and energy into understanding the many complex situations we've been posed with, whether on a Hampshire scale or bigger, need to do better. We need to come to the realization that there's a world outside of the West and outside of this bubble that is yearning for action. So I urge with my deepest hope that the graduating class of 2018 can use their loyalty and passion towards lending a hand, complicating their own positionality outside of this country and apprise themselves. While I have struggled to define myself, define and then redefine my position in this myriad of issues and unknown tepid waters, since day one, I know that I belonged here. Now, it may sound contradictory to everything else I've just said so far, but I think that that is a true depiction of a Hampshire experience. It's that you know you belong here, but at the same time, you are tested every step of the way, being reminded that there are problems within this community that need to be addressed. However, in my opinion, there are problems everywhere you go. Today, you're here. Tomorrow, you might be 11,514 kilometers away in Delhi, that's roughly 7,000 miles, I still don't use miles. <laughs> Trying to constantly educate those around you about LGBTQ rights. It's to say that you don't know where life is taking you next, and I can say from experience that it's hard to pack your bags and go into an unknown perhaps, but everything that you and I, and by extension our friends and families, have taught and learned will come in handy. Never would I have ever thought that I could have a structured life coming out of a four-year undergraduate program that is so unstructured. <laughs> I believe, and I take the liberty to speak for my peers, that Hampshire's biggest strength lies in its ability to allow its students to be free thinkers. I have worked independently on projects. I found my voice. I've experienced a type of freedom I cannot experience anywhere else. I often think about what would have happened had I not decided to come to Hampshire? What would have happened if I went anywhere else? I've never been so comfortably loud or obnoxious or weird anywhere else. Nowhere else have I so freely gone to event, events just for the free food <laughs> without knowing anything about the event. <laughs> and to this day, I can't seem to find an answer that makes me happy and that speaks volumes to me. My first day here when OC who was their national student advisor at the time of, greeted me at Merrill to this very moment as I stand in front of you. I count the number of times I felt grateful for this experience. It has made me who I am, it has built me, it has made me stronger, and it has given me more than I thought it would. It's given me a sense of perspective, a critical lens, and a will to change. It has given me the opportunity 
to blossom into the person I am today, a person I'm proud of, friends that I'm proud of, who I've seen evolve and grow so much. It's given me two beautiful pillars of strength, my friends, Kamu and Lisa. For context, Kamu hated me all of our first year, but usually denies it by saying, I knew deep down that you were a good friend. <laughs> and Lisa, whose name I didn't remember for the first two weeks I knew her. I'm still sorry about that. <laughs> and many others, many, many others that have supported me throughout my time here. And for that, I'm truly grateful. And I'm sure it's given the rest of you a sense of home too, whether through friends or professors or the journey of getting to know yourself better. Sometimes we are a community and sometimes we are not. And I think that that's due to our individualistic personalities. We all bring something new to the table. Moving forward, I hope that we remember that we are all parts of the same puzzle. We've come this far with the support of one another. And as we continue moving forward, we should hold this experience close. We, as a generation, are facing a crisis that is impossible for one entity to tackle by itself. But together, we're a lot more influential. So, to the graduating class of 2018, I ask of you to never forget where you come from, the changes that you have brought about, and all that you have achieved. Channel that achievement into being the best versions of yourselves. Remember that this is a community you can look back to whenever you need. The world awaits our resilient, powerful, headstrong, and passionate selves. Congratulations to everyone for coming this far. Podium, I'm gonna do something embarrassing. My mom cringed when I told her I was gonna do this, and she was like, no, 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 please don't. And I was like, no, I'm gonna do it anyway. So, I'd like to give a shout out to my parents, Nibha and Thirendra Joshi. My 12-year-old my brother, Sharia, and my pupper, Scrappy, for being by my side, always. I love you guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Samia. Uh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Gosh, I feel, like a, I feel like a mom too in this moment, or like a really proud grandpa who's like wandered up onto stage, like I'm so proud. <laughs> I gotta do the thing where I pull up my speech again, so we're just gonna have a fun little, little moment here. All right. So there are some very impressive people up on this stage today, and there are some very impressive people in front of me right now. I am completely awed and humbled to have been chosen to present Professor Loretta Ross. <sighs> she has paved the way for 40 years in reproductive justice, and in the fight against white supremacy. She provided the much needed support that we needed at this college this semester against Trump and his white supremacy. Um, yeah. And she gave an amazing talk on the eugenics of science modern today, which is something that I find very important in my dealings with marine biology and the limitations of gender in that regard and the way that we talk about creatures and humans. It is also such an honor to be up here because she is one of the co-creators of the term reproductive justice. Yeah, right? <laughs> And as someone who has volunteered as an escort at the last abortion clinic in Louisville, Kentucky, I, I am speechless, but I, I must find the words 
and I tried to find the words for this speaker, this author, this editor, this communicator, this visionary, this activist, this mover, this leader, countless awards, published works, of more five college student and professor than a lot of students who are graduating today. You have works in the Smith archives, have worked for Smith, have <laughs> given so many speeches and workshops both with CLIP, have been a part of the Hampshire community for 30 years, spreading love and care and compassion, but also a powerful voice of change. You asked for it to be simple, and so I don't want to drag on because I could sing your praises all day, but we, we do need to graduate. We all have got this far. We're still alive. You know, let's make it through. And in her words, I hope that she will continue to keep trolling the trolls in her speech. Loretta Ross. Those of you who know me know how hard this speech is going to be for me because I've promised not to curse. <laughs> so I guess I better to speak really slow because my mouth does not have a filter and my tongue definitely outraces my brain. Um, the first thing I want to say is to give honor and praise to what day this is. You're not only graduating, but I hope you remember for the rest of your life that you graduated on Malcolm X's birthday. You may not have known that. As an activist, it's one of those days I can never forget. You know, and so whenever May 19th comes around, either I'm protesting somewhere, celebrating Malcolm X, or now speaking in Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> but those things are all related. <laughs> you know, I, the way I've been in this movement for 50 years is that I've learned that if you're going to be a lifetime social justice activist, you're going to have to party as hard as you work. <laughs> okay? So, don't let anybody tell you that doing good cannot be fun, okay? A mentor of mine, Leonard Zeskin, once told me to lighten up because <laughs> I was doing anti-fascist work, monitoring hate groups and stuff like that. And I was taking it so seriously. We're in Atlanta, the birth of the civil rights movement. People have died, you know, so, oh, you know, we got to do it all the time. And Lenny told me to lighten up. He said, Loretta, fighting Nazis should be fun. <laughs> yeah. He said, think about it. It's being a Nazi that sucks. <laughs> and I've never forgotten that lesson. So I bring it to my teaching here at Hampshire. I'm really surprised that y'all voted for me to be commencement speaker, actually, because <laughs> I'm a tough teacher. Now, I don't believe that learning should be a hazing, like a fraternity thing. So I don't understand people who punish people to teach them. I don't get that. If you got an S&M complex, get out of education. <laughs> You'll have a lot more fun in a lot of other places. <laughs> but at the same time, my job is to teach. The student's job is to engage with the materials. And I don't coddle. I don't think any of you think I'm a coddler. Actually, I don't, I'm not paid to do your emotional labor. So I never, you know, held out a tit. <laughs> Mammy is not in my job description. 
So I expect people to work hard and take charge of their own learning, just the way I hope you leave here and take charge of your life. Stuff will happen to you, but you choose how you respond to it. Otherwise, you'll let everybody else leave their dirty fingerprints on your story. That's your choice. You can't choose bad stuff happening. You can choose whether it defines you, whether your identity is the only way you get defined. Those are real choices. So I really think that people have to be responsible for the investment that others have made into their future. You just can't take that for granted. I actually said to a Div 2 student when I was advising him, I've never seen anybody agonize so much over their privilege. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're upset because you've got too many choices? Only in Hampshire. <laughs> so I do criticize the essays where every other sentence begins with the word I. And you know who you are. I didn't teach any of you graduating students, but y'all remember those essays, I'm sure. And I know we prepared you to argue with every family member, all right, who you claim aren't as woke as you are, <laughs> but eventually they'll forgive you <laughs> once you forgive yourself and get over yourself, okay? I'm not sure if you understand this, but the purpose of family is not to be your political comrades. <laughs> the purpose of family is to be there when nobody else will. <laughs> That's their purpose. <laughs> you know, I don't have anything in common with my family, but I know who's going to bury me. You know, and that's a macabre way of looking at it. <laughs> but that's a God's honest truth. You need to know who's going to be in charge in that moment. <laughs> so don't piss them off now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, when the announcement went out that I was going to be Hampshire's commencement speaker, all of a sudden, I started hearing from all these friends that I knew in my nonprofit and business world that I didn't know had went to Hampshire. I was like, God, this school must be amazing. <laughs> I mean, Vanessa Northing and Gamble was one of the first ones to write me. She is a kick butt prof prof his professor in the history of medicine, the first graduating class. And, and she led this whole Tuskegee study that, caused, that, that precipitated a presidential pardon and apology for all the harm the Tuskegee experiment had done. That's Hampshire, y'all. <laughs> I mean, really. And then, of course, anybody who saw Black Panther knows that a Hampshire grad, Lupita Nyong'o, was in it. Wakanda forever! So, I know we're a bit kooky and eclectic and weird to anybody. Well, actually, it's weird to me. Because <laughs> I'm still in the process of writing evaluations. It'd be so much easier to just give you a grade. <laughs> One thing I've appreciated about the evaluation process is that I have to revisit very intimately each of my students and the body of work y'all have produced in order to write this evaluation. I can't not think about you. And that 
is labor intensive, but I understand what it produces. And so when you sign up, this is what you do. One of my students wrote this quote that I'm going to use. This is, the, his name is Salem Frobos. Salem, I don't know if you're here, but I told him I'd be reading out his paper. <laughs> this is the kind of education I came to Hampshire for. I joke with friends and family that Hampshire's fund policies like no tests, no majors, and no letter grades are not worth, quite worth spending $50,000 on for a liberal arts degree. But I've learned what makes this experience worth it for me is gaining the kind of knowledge that has the potential to make myself as an individual a better person as well as to have a positive influence on the world around me. Finding a stable career is not what drew me to Hampshire. It's the power that comes with an alternative education. My God, I couldn't, th I couldn't say it better than this student said it back to us. And so that's what makes a degree from Hampshire priceless. We teach you the power of critical thinking, something that's being denied to many other students who are brainwashed into becoming robots <laughs> in the system rather than the grit and the gears. I want y'all to be the grit. That's the grit singular, not grits like in South. Okay. <laughs> but I also want you to understand how important that is right now, because we have to become the frontline defenders of democracy. We're in a real critical moment, people. There are those who believe that the only way, the only way they can hold on to their greedy grasp of power is to destroy our democratic system, to destroy reason, evidence, equality, law, decency, facts, and justice. Oh my God. Now, I don't want to get in trouble by naming names, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Your last commencement speaker who named names got trolled forever. Unfortunately, she wasn't used to dealing with trolls. I make a career out of it. And part of the problem is that I refuse to breathe in their toxic fumes. I don't give them any air. I don't give them any space. And let me just tell you something that's a real important life lesson. Don't spend any time hating people. The, the worst cut you can ever do to a person is ignore them. That works so much better than spending any energy hating them. Because then they're sucking your energy out and investing it in them. Just saying. So anyway, if we're going to defend democracy, let me start talking about how do we do it. My favorite self-made cliche is that when a lot of different people think many different ideas, and they move in the same direction, that's a movement. But when a lot of different people think one idea, and they move in the same direction, that's a cult. <laughs> and we are not going to be liberated by people with cult-like behaviors. Let's be clear. So, stop spending all your time trying to persuade everybody that you know to agree with you and believe what you believe. We are not organizing cults. We are organizing a human rights movement. That's a different task. And so, 
instead of getting people to agree with you, learn some calling in skills so you can get people to agree to be with you. That's a different task. Thinking whatever they need to think to join the human rights movement. Because all of us don't think working on women's rights is the only thing to work on. Or working on queer rights is the only thing to work on. Or working on the environment is the only thing to work on. I'm part of the women's rights wing of a human rights movement. Working with an environmental and a trans justice wing of a human rights movement. So, stop acting like you're as woke as you think you are. <laughs> and to the extent that you think somebody else ain't woke enough, proves how unwoke you actually are. <laughs> so, I'm writing my next book called Calling in the Calling Out Culture. It's born out of my experience here in the Pioneer Valley. <laughs> because we've given y'all radical politics without the radical skills to handle them. And so we've got to do better. And so in closing, I hope I've left a lasting footprint on this college. I've only been here one year. I'm actually a fake academic. I've been an activist for 50 years, and I've taught for one, so. <laughs> I don't actually consider myself an academic. Though I do like being called professor, which none of my students ever did. <laughs> said, please call me professor, and everybody went, Loretta. <laughs> I guess this is Hampshire. <laughs> anyway, I want to say to you, and Samia, you said it, never find an answer that makes you happy. Oh my God, that's the internal quest for knowledge, right there, and that's so Hampshire. So you're graduating for Hampshire and will leave us, but I promise you, Hampshire will never leave your heart. Thank you. Sorry for that really loud voice crack you just got into the microphone. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Loretta Ross. Well, we're doing it, we're here. How's everybody feeling? Woo! We're so close, we got it. We made it through Div 3s, we can, we can sit longer, you know? <laughs> Shake yourself out, let yourself like breathe, stretch a little, you know? Do a good stretch, no? All right, good morning. It's afternoon now, I don't know. <laughs> and up next, we have our alum addressing us, Maria Vallejo. She is from the graduating class of fall 72, or that incoming class, sorry, you know, it's, it's a Hampshire thing. It's when you come in, because learning doesn't end and is a journey, we all get ovals, I'm very excited <laughs> for my oval. <laughs> There are some people who like didn't know about that until this year and I like saw the look on their face as they realized that and someone I had to break the news to them like learning learning's never ending. We're we're gonna just keep going like this every day, new growth. And they just were like, Whoa, what? <laughs> it's really an oval. <laughs> 
but I'm gonna put my circle into a square because that's what this college taught me how to do. <laughs> and because I, I don't have frames that will fit an oval, so. Do, 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 I'm going down to my speech. That's what we're waiting for. <laughs> All right. The alum Maria M. Malejo is the current chief executive officer from Palm Beach Street College, Lake Worth Campus. She, is the VP of, she was the VP of student service at Nassau Community College. She has received a number of awards, including, but not limited to, in 2004, she was given the title of one of the 20 Mujeres of Distinction for her work educating and bringing education to Puerto Rican Latino youth. <laughs> and continuing for all her years of service in education to community and bringing education to those who need it most. Without further ado, your alum. Good afternoon. We've hit the 12 o'clock mark. Congratulations, graduates, and good day, fellow alumni. You're joining over 17,000 Hampshire alums that are out there in the world, ready and willing to help you figure out what non satis theory, to know is not enough, really means after graduation. As a member of the class of 72, which of course we always banter back and forth. It is the best class. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here celebrating with you. As a first generation college student, before there was such an identifier, mind you, I know the struggles, whether it's for those of you of your second language acquisition, those of you whose parents never went to high school, never mind college those of you that have very diverse backgrounds and are always trying to look for your little niche in the world. I know the struggles. So who are you, Hampshire graduates? You, like the students from the very beginning, have always left your mark here. You've been an essential part of shaping this college. You have helped make decisions You've sparked essential, though many times, difficult conversations. And you know why it's been said this morning? Because you are the best. And you are the brightest. Now, some of you may have heard this from the time you first said Dada. Oh, he is so cute and so bright. Oh, look at her. She knows it. And some of you may never have heard it at all, but you are. And it's because of Hampshire at this point in your life. I'm here to tell you that this life-changing community has made you who you are today. All of that creative floundering, to quote a fellow alum from the class of 82, who claims to be the best, <laughs> gave you the strength and gave you the wisdom and you will take that with you as part of the armor to deal with what's coming. That experience has made you an invaluable asset to our communities and our world. Unlike others that claim to be best and brightest, you graduates are critical thinkers. You're not afraid to face challenges. You go around obstacles, you rise above them. You persist. There's nothing wimpy about you. And that is because you know one thing that many graduates don't know, and I should know after 40 years in higher ed, that your passions and your goals are bigger than you. It's not all about you. And thank God for that. 
Many of you are already leaders in community service, and some of you are up and coming leaders in social justice. But all of you by now know that it's not about thinking outside the box. Because for us, Hampshire alums, there is no box. Instead, we always ask, why not? Sorry, father and mother, they will continue to do that. I will give you two very brief examples of how Hampshire gave me the confidence to be my own person and back up with the skills that I needed. When I applied to graduate school right after Hampshire, I received a call from the registrar at CUNY, City University of New York. And she said, Maria Vallejo? I said, Maria Vallejo, yes. <laughs> what is this that you're sending? Where is your transcript? I can't read this stuff. What is this all about? And at first, I took it so personally and felt like, oh my God, this is the end. What have I done? No one will understand my education. <laughs> and then I looked back and said, you know what? I'm better than that. And that's fine. Thank you very much. I will no longer apply. Not even a month later, I received a letter from Columbia University. And they accepted me with a full fellowship, including books for a two-year master's program. You never know, you never know. The other one was the obstacle of when I wanted to do my PhD. And for educators, of course, on traditional institutions, a PhD is very important. You can't get to be a leader with most of them without that. So I wanted to apply and I started looking into schools. And I had already a master's in social work and student personnel and so I wanted to continue and do clinical psych, some form of psych. I wanted to be a therapist. And I started looking into programs and most of them I saw accepted maybe 10 people and maybe gave out two scholarships. And I said, wait a minute, I'm on my own, I've got to work, I don't have the money, this is not gonna happen. But then, through my networks, I found an opportunity. And it was not the opportunity I was looking for. There was a fellowship from the federal government in bilingual education. And I looked at it, I said, but I really don't want to teach in K through 12, I tried that, it's not my thing, blah, blah, blah. But then I started thinking, how do I, I'm a Hampshire alum, I can make things happen. How do I change this around? I applied, I got accepted, I got the fellowship. I had to take my courses in linguistics, in curriculum development, in everything to make myself a really top-notch administrator. But I did my dissertation in perceptual psychology. I found a way to use that love I had and make it work for me. And it was accepted. Now, it wasn't easy. Psychology department at the school was like, what do you want to prove and why? And you want to do it on who? Latinos? Really? We don't need that kind of work here. But it happened, and I did it. And it's because of the confidence that I gained here. Be assured that after Div 3, a doctoral dissertation is a piece of cake. <laughs> I will tell you, when I sat around those committees, at one point I had to call my professors. I was in upstate New York, they were in the city, and I'm like, can I get you on conference call? Can the three of you get into one room and decide on what you want me to do with this thesis? <laughs> because they were each sending me their own perspectives on what I should change and it was driving me crazy. <laughs> and why is that? Why is it that Div 3 prepared you so strongly? Because you persevered. And most people that start doctorates don't. That little dissertation stops them. And we persevere. And the world needs people that persevere. People who don't give up. And that's why Hampshire needs you. We need you to continue your engagement with our college community. As you go out there in the world, you represent us 
but we need you to come back. We need your encouragement to current Hampshire students. We need your networks. As many of you know, the networks you make here are for a lifetime. And we need those same networks to come back to the current students. They need to see the role models. There are survivors out there. <laughs> they need to know that it works and that you can get jobs. And if you can't get them, you create them. We need your collective wisdom within the alumni circles. Of course, we also need your donations. Now, you knew there'd be a catch somewhere, right? <laughs> and so far, the last numbers I looked at, we only need 25 more grads to make that match. Come on now. By donating to the Graduate Gift Match Challenge, you help us to meet the $110,000 match made possible by one of our alums. And she has been incredibly generous to us. That will do so much for Hampshire. You can do so much for Hampshire. Help us to help others to access this incredible education, which in my humble opinion is the best in the world. And it may be a cliche, but I truly believe this. Be the change you want to see in the world. I think we taught you that. Be an active Hampshire alum. We're counting on you. Now go celebrate the start of your new chapter in your new lives and be proud Hampshire alums. Go. Um, well, we've made it. I'm so proud of you. Before we get up in, you know, I'm not going to have to prep you for uh, any protests that are happening during this. I was prepped for that, you know, because that's our school. And, uh, but that, I don't think that's going to happen during this, but... Please wait for your row to be called by the person in the aisle in preparation for your degree. And I would like to give a shout out to someone, a specific graduate today, Anthony Thomas. who I, I asked if I could give him this shout out because I'm just so amazed that we have a school that allows for someone who had, I relate to the problems of feeling very left behind in high school, thinking that I didn't know how to learn and I wasn't doing it right and how did I just keep failing even though I was, I was trying and I was reading and I was doing all the things I thought I was supposed to be doing but normal education just wasn't working for me. And that was the same for Anthony Thomas. But today, today thanks to Hampshire and our odd, wacky, but wonderful education system, this trustee will be graduating with us. And I am so proud to be a part of this institution for that. And I am so proud of all of you and him. And without further ado, the class of 2018. So I want to introduce to you the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of Faculty, Eva Rushman, who will launch you from that side of the stage over toward this. Eva. Thank you, President Lash. I commend to you these students who have satisfactorily completed the requirements prescribed by the faculty of Hampshire College and are qualified to receive the degree of Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> so
Somya Yoshi. Nick Lifson. Anthony Thomas. Xiao Shi Young. Lisa Darmit. Jacob Yang. Yawen Chung. Caroline Steen. Kyoko Sano. Tenzin Sangpo. James Tyler Rubin. Josephine Eilertson. Chandra Hughes. Ivana Myungjin Yang. Jesse Carreno. Gabriela Chamberlain Palaya. <laughs> Sophia Arnold. <laughs> Sam Jackson. <laughs> Flavia Nuanquo. <laughs> Sienna Cornish. Alyssa Lidman. <laughs> Linnea Deldeo. <laughs> Kai Shibaka. <laughs> April Crowley. Jazlyn Prince. Nisa Jackson. Ben Bailey. Jazlyn Craft. Ashley McGrath. <laughs> Annie Tate Cockrum. <laughs> Sophie Green. <laughs> Bridget Champlin. Shelby Schwartz. <laughs> Augie Brinker. <laughs> ben Ehrlich Oppenheimer. <laughs> Zachary Metz. Joel Eskelin. Sarah Perez Battles. Brian Rosario. Cole Fishman.
Josh Salzberg. Camille Mirza. Doma Gale. Aya Razaz. Natalia Isabel Callahan. Sukya Bishur Ne. Charlie Mattis. Rachel Kalner. Tobias Goodman. Amy Hoops. Maggie Story. Greg Dubin. Nina Maria Gressel. Temperance Dewar. Nancy Michaud. <laughs> Lindsay Moon. <laughs> Zara Cannon Mohammed. <laughs> Sadie Higgins. Brooke Fitzgerald. <laughs> Benjamin Stump. <laughs> Jacob Sirkisun Prescott. <laughs> Maggie Bowen. Emma Rose Gross. Asa Needle. Noah Cohen. Caroline Belge. Ivy Skinner. <laughs> Margaret Tyre. <laughs> Isabel Toby. <laughs> Justin Byler. <laughs> Libby Parker. Olivia Baxter St. Pierre. <laughs> Juliana Elizabeth Williamson Green. <laughs> Zachary Dylan Volpendesta. <laughs> True Markham. Avery Homer. <laughs> Alexa Wolf. <laughs> Zane Clark. <laughs> J. 
Jack Stripple. <laughs> Leslie Evans. <laughs> EJ Zhu. <laughs> Kamal A. Gatewood. Brienne Lasson Burrell. <laughs> Justin Michael Emmanuel. <laughs> Madison Williams. Alize Crystal Wineglass. <laughs> TX Watson. <laughs> Rachel Nolan. <laughs> Julia Barlow Gill. Samantha Catherine Citrullo. Brandon King. Samantha Ryan. Kay Bushman. Sophie Dempster Greenbaum. <laughs> Nat Gilsdorf. <laughs> Zoe Felix Tran Hazlitt. William Franzosa. <laughs> Shannon Victoria Clancy. <laughs> Lisa Kaspari. <laughs> Piper Patterson. Ryan Rogers. <laughs> Nashua Malco. <laughs> McKenna Hill. <laughs> Ray Mendel. Basia Kasinitz. Ariana Elizabeth Mossgrove. Malika Ross. Missy Bragg. Alice Grendon. <laughs> Quinlan Schultz. <laughs> Kahari Mickens. <laughs> Sabina Paneva. Johnny Williams.
Finbar Ammon Warren. Snem Emily DeSellier. Emma Lee Slepp. Ash Lerke Ho. Catherine Milo Jane Nula Keating Bizark. <laughs> Kai Muller. <laughs> Emma Ziskowski. <laughs> Emily Park Jordan. Olivia Dalmado. <laughs> Madison McDonald. <laughs> Anya Nena Uzu. <laughs> Eli Shalen. Luca Egone Faithful. <laughs> Malik Ford. <laughs> Jimmy Marone. <laughs> Emily Warnock. Finlay Markham. <laughs> Elizabeth Morgan Lam Lazowski. <laughs> Sophie Spillman. <laughs> Augusta Catherine Sauer. Sarah Brown. <laughs> Matthew Raymond. <laughs> Avery Hernandez. <laughs> Juliet Fleur Humor. Morgan Diana Sweeney. <laughs> Dylan Eli Welch. <laughs> Andrew McDonald. <laughs> Daniel Hansworth Lamport. Jade Silverstein. Grant Hollow Mormon. Jackson Polston. Samuel Stein. Spencer T. Murray. <laughs> Rachel Brimmer. <laughs> Amy Stasha Adelman Gulligian.
Tess O'Day. Mia Muscarella. Aiden Alice West. Rachel Cowan. Julia Kirsten. Lindsay Jane Appleyard. Benjamin Betts. Levin Ritter. Jordan Janowitz. Hunter Golden. Raheem Hirani. Isabella Witte. Natalie Strom. Forrest Locklear. Noah Isabella Coffee Moore. Marta Annex Schnauss. Jason Drill. Maya Josephine Brinton. Kristen Peterson. Lena G. Deutsch. Sophie Grace Frank. Nico Gomez Horton. Elon M. Goldman. Anabe Aponi Sabata. Dana Hobby. Casey Chon. Bar Kolodny. Marquis Sebron. Taylor Porco. Anthony Breachy. Kali Ransom. Samuel Nissenfeld. <laughs> Kaylee Vizina. <laughs> Celeste Jacobs. <laughs> Ali Simard. Matt Carney. Raymond A. Perkins.
Flint Roosh. Sandra Perrine Theodora Sante. Anastasia Spicer. Sheila Adamina Brown. Pace Knowles Donnelly. Liliana Sampson. Olivia Anna Wargo. Onea Engel Bradley. Boaz Steed. Excuse me. Boaz Steed. Ruth Lewis. Mackenzie Armstrong. Ben Hesselton Clements. Hank Piper. Michael Vincent Diakila. Hannah Trobaugh. Nomi Frank. Rosemary Timmons. Mina Kumari Dietrich. Catherine Collier. Francis Garrison Greenleaf. James Peck. Hannah Peters. Sweeney Sweeney. Justin Taft Morales. Annie Applewise. Katerina Kenworthy. Rose Tui Generali. Clara Gaynor. Layla Kaplan. Anastasia Dinos. Theodore Naylor. Fiona Post. Taryn Wilkins Plumley. Leah Rose Sherman Hahn. Maddie Chrisman Miller. Bay Rogers. Benjamin Levinson. May Siva.
Theo Bowman Wozencraft. <laughs> Madeline Janet Dye. Grace Carol Demaray. Calum Justice. Ryan Almendiger. Yeah. Reiner Alex Batham Nath. Yeah. Kai Olbers Mishima. Yeah. Dakari Arutya. Alex Boyd. Justin Manalga. Max Ray. Liam Kramer White. Dylan Wardwell. <laughs> Lily Sorosi. <laughs> Moni Alexander. <laughs> Graciela Rodriguez Carmona. Louisa Bigham. <laughs> Maggie Elizabeth Punahele Ng. <laughs> Thea Cohen. <laughs> Lena Ayala Abraham. Mira Garrity. Brian Prieto. Noah Greenlow. Rowan Ladmer Price. Matilda Engel. Dana Maple Feeney. Sophie Andrews. And Haley Holsether. Thank you, Dean Rushman. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Hampshire College, I confer upon you and each of you the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and responsibilities which pertain thereto. All rise.
Jamila, will you bring these proceedings to a close? Congratulations. The commencement exercises this 19th day of May 2018 are concluded.